In my previous video, I talked about finding your exposure time by using our exposure calculator. If you're not using film or glass in your exposure unit because you're using a direct-to-screen system like this, obviously the exposure calculator won't be able to help you determine those times. So I'm going to show you today how to do a step test, a simple step test by using, and you can use this with film or anything, but for a direct-to-screen system like this, it's the easiest and best, most effective way to determine your exposure times. So I'm just going to quick image this screen, um, and we'll, we'll go on from there to show you how to do that step test. So now that it's been imaged, we can go ahead and step it off in the exposure unit. So in doing a step test, you can really use any artwork that you have, but I'll leave a link to this file in the comments below, um, and you can, you can grab this out of my Dropbox, and uh, it, it's basically designed for the step test. So there's concentric circles, there's text, there's halftones. All of these things are good to have a, a variation of different artworks, so when we're looking at the resolution later during the developing process, we can have a good understanding which step looks the best. So basically, what you'll want to do is take an educated guess of what you think this screen is going to be exposed at. And you're going to want to have that time be somewhere in the middle. So what we're going to end up doing is, so this is a 230 screen, yellow mesh, CP text. I want to say this is going to be somewhere around 100 units on the Delphit unit that I'm going to be using today. So I want it to fall about 100 units somewhere in the middle here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do steps of 20. So what we'll do is we'll cover up the bulk portion of this screen. We'll tape this down and then we'll shoot it for 20 seconds, 20 light units. And then what we'll do is we'll move this blocking material back and this blocking material can be cardboard or anything that's going to block the light. Once again, tape this down nice and flat and we'll shoot it for another 20, 20 units. Move this back. Shoot for another 20 units, 20 units, 20 units, 20 units, 20 units, 20 units. So then what we'll end up having at the end is we'll have a screen with 20 units, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, all on the same screen that we can look and see for resolution. We can look and see where the color ch stops changing as far as the emulsion itself but we can go into that when we do the developing process. But now what we're gonna do is do the process where we actually expose it in the exposure unit. So let's go ahead and step this off. I'll take my blocking material and I'm gonna cover up all of the steps except for one of them. I'm gonna tape those down. Because there's no glass in this exposure unit, So we don't want it to fall off and we want it to continue to block. So now we have it blocked off except for one. So I'll put this in the exposure unit. And I'm going to shoot it for 20 units. We'll continue that process for each step of the way. And then once we go through the exposure process, we'll develop it and inspect the screen to determine the proper exposure step. Step one is complete. down so that the second step is open and repeat the process.
Step two is complete. And again, we'll now move this down. So three steps are open to the light. I'll continue this process until each one of these steps has been exposed for 20 units. And then we'll go and develop this screen. So now that we've exposed each step, we, what we have on this screen is this step here was exposed at 20 units, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160. And what we'll do now is we'll develop the screen that we like the way we normally would. And then afterwards, we're going to look and we're going to inspect each one of those patches. screen has been developed, we're going to go in and inspect these patches to see the proper exposure time for this given emulsion, how it was coated, mesh count, and this particular exposure unit. So each one of these steps, we're looking to see the best resolution. We're going to look at the text, the half tones on this side as well. It's best if you have a loop like this, you can inspect it. You're looking for good mesh bridging. So you can see this top step, a lot of the text and the half tones are completely closed in. That's telling me way overexposed where this bottom patch down here, the step down here, we're losing some of the half tones. And this was 20 units here. So this is telling me way underexposed. So as we go up, in the steps, best resolution, I think, puts us right at this step here. So if we count them off, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 units for this particular stencil seems to be the best exposure time. Also, it's tough to see on the video, but there's a slight color variation from step to step when the steps are underexposed. When it stops changing color, which is right here where I'm calling it at 100 units, it stops changing color and all of these top steps are all the same color of emulsion actually. But it's tough to see on this video. If you're doing it in person, it's a lot easier to see. But where that color change stops taking place is the hardening point of the emulsion. And that's going to be your proper exposure time and the best resolution.